Good morning. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, the Lord Jesus Christ, and our friend and companion on this journey, the Holy Spirit. It's so good to see all of you. I'm glad that we get to be together in God's presence this morning. I'm a little confused. You must not have read the Thursday email about the black tie worship service this morning. <laughs> Oh, it's so good to be together. I'm Tom Abbott. I'm blessed to be one of the pastors here at First Presbyterian Church in Salida, Colorado, and I have the great gift of sharing that pastoral role with Hillary Downs, and together with our gifted musicians, we'll be leading this time of worship. A few things about our life together. The three youth groups and kids club are all happening this week. A prayer group, the two Bible studies, and men's breakfast meet this week. Tuesday night at 6.30 in Fellowship Hall, there will be an inquirer's class for anyone in, in, interested in learning more about the Christian faith in general or about the Presbyterian Church USA or about our congregation here. And all are welcome to attend. We would love to have you. The session has called for the annual meeting of the congregation to take place immediately following our one 10 a.m. worship service on February 27th. The annual meeting will then be followed by a potluck meal. It's going to be a wonderful morning of celebrating our life together, so we hope that you'll be able to be here that day. And the annual reports have been published, and they're out on the table in the hallway there. And so if you want to grab one of those annual reports uh, so you can be reading uh, what happened in the life of the church last year, um, please feel free to do that. If you'd like to make a financial donation to the life of our church, you can put your gift in the basket in the back, or you can give online, or you can always send your donations to the church, and every gift is a huge blessing to us. Well, today we're continuing our journey through Paul's letter to the church in Colossae, And we're talking about our wardrobes today. Um, So that may give you a clue (laughs) about what I'm wearing here. Uh, So as we begin to think about uh, what Paul is writing to us about the wardrobes that we wear in relation to God, listen to God's word to us and for us. So if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. Your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. He is your life. When Christ, your real life, remember, shows up again on this earth, you'll show up too. The real you, the glorious you. Meanwhile, be content with obscurity like Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's stand and begin singing our praises to God. Oh, 
Continue to enter into worship. Let us pray. Gracious God, what a gift, Lord, it is to know you. What a gift it is to gather together with friends and with you at our center, gathered to worship and to celebrate. We are grateful, Lord. For your power and your might as we see it demonstrated in the beauty of your creation that surrounds us we are grateful lord that nothing on earth is more powerful than your love so we come to sit in your presence to sing to celebrate and as we come, Lord, we also realize that to be fully ourselves before you, the one who loves us and knows us better than anyone else on earth, that we also need to bring to you and confess the moments and the ways that we have fallen short of what you want for us and how you want us to live in this world. It's so easy, Lord, to lean toward our first impulse that puts our wants and needs first. It's so easy to allow our insecurities to lead the way. It's so easy to ignore another's pain and seek our own comfort. Forgive us, Lord, for not seeking you in all the moments of all of our days for not trusting you with all things. And as we ask for your forgiveness, Lord, we cling to the truth and the hope that you forgive us, that you cleanse us, that you send us out again as your forgiven and loved people sent out to do better this week. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace. And God, as we are here in this place in worship, we pray that you would help us to focus. Help us to listen for and to hear your voice speaking to us. And God, help us to live into your calling that's upon each of our lives. Amen. Well, our scripture reading continues in Colossians chapter 3. So let's listen to and for God's word. And that means killing off everything connected with that way of death. Sexual promiscuity, impurity, lust, doing whatever you feel like whenever you feel like it, and grabbing whatever attracts your fancy. That's a life shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. It's because of this kind of thing that God is about to explode in anger. 
It wasn't long ago that you were doing all that stuff and not knowing any better. But you know better now, so make sure it's all gone for good. Bad temper, irritability, meanness, profanity, dirty talk. Don't lie to one another. You're done with that old life. It's like a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes that you've stripped off and put into the fire. Now you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom-made by the Creator with His label on it. All the old fashions are now obsolete. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish, religious and irreligious, insider and outsider, uncivilized and uncouth, slave and free, mean nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. So, chosen by God for this new life of love, Dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the Master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic, all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. And cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing. Sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail in your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master Jesus. Thanking God the Father every step of the way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And, uh, there are kids here. If any of them want to come up and have a seat and chat with me for a minute, they are welcome to do so. Hi, guys. How you doing today? Good. So good to see you. Hi, guys. Hello. Yes, there's John. Hi, Kyle. Hi. Do any of you have a favorite piece of clothing? Like, what's your favorite thing to wear? Do you have a favorite thing to wear? Nobody does? I have. You do? Well, Emerson loves his taco shirt. Oh, okay. Do you have a favorite thing to wear, John? I have a favorite thing to wear. I, I like wearing, wearing my guy my gold, my gold shirt. Yeah. 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 Cool, your glow-in-the-dark dino shirt. Kyle, what's your favorite thing to wear? A mask is your favorite thing to wear. <laughs> What's your favorite thing, Corbin? My glow-in-the-dark PJs. Oh, your glow-in-the-dark PJs. And what? What's yours? Oh, your cheetah pants that match with every shirt. That's a, that's a pretty cool thing. I like my shoes. You like your shoes? All of them or just a special pair? A special pair. You have a special pair of shoes that you like. We all have something favorite that we like to wear. Like some people really, maybe their favorite thing to wear is their PJs because that means they're going to go to bed soon and they like sleeping. Or maybe they're just comfy to wear around the house. Or maybe somebody's favorite thing to wear is their ski clothes because they know they're going to go skiing and that's one of their favorite things to do. Or maybe their favorite thing to wear is, well, just something that makes them feel good. Maybe it's a pretty dress. Maybe it's pair of shoes that you really like. Yeah, there's all kinds of things. Well, um, today in our Bible story here in the sanctuary that we just read, it talks a little bit about clothes that we put on, but it's talking about our attitude, putting on like clothes. Do you know what our attitude is? It's like, are you happy? Are you sad? Are you cranky? Are you 
being happy or pleasant. I have a friend who used to always say when she was in a bad mood that she had her cranky pants on. You ever heard anybody say that? So she was like, I got my cranky pants on. I need to get those off so that I have a better attitude today. Um, so what it's telling us is what we ought to do today and every day is before we put on anything else, we're supposed to put on love. And you might say, well, I can't put that on like a shirt. But we can think about it. We can use our imaginations and we can talk to God and say, God, help me put on love. And then we can, you know, put our sleeves in, pull it over our heads, tie it up so that we have on love. So before we do anything else during the day, we remember that we're to love other people. And what's tomorrow? Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. So that's the perfect day. To school. And it's school also. Valentine's Day and school. Valentine's school day at school. Yes. Yes, you might give Valentine's at school or to your friends outside of school. But anyway, that's a good time to think about how do we love people? And it doesn't just mean like, you know, kissy, huggy love. It just means like, how are we kind? How are we generous? How are we good friends? So think about how to love people before we do anything else, before we get our cranky pants on. We'll keep those off, off to the side. Um, we'll just love people. Well, let's pray, and then you guys can head out to Sunday school or to nursery, okay? God, thank you so much that you love us just the way we are, um, just for who we are. God, help us to um, remember to put on love and to love other people also. Amen. Okay, you guys can head out. Are you going to go, Emerson? Please stand and, and join us as we continue in our worship this morning.
Paul wrote, Now you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the Creator with God's label on it. All the old fashions are now obsolete. Today we're talking about what we wear. We're talking about getting rid of our old clothes and taking on a new wardrobe. For some of us, that's a very exciting idea, isn't it? Going and getting a new wardrobe. Today, I've brought some of my oldest clothes with me. What I'm wearing, this tux, is the oldest bunch of clothing that I have in my closet. This Tux was bought in about 1957. My grandfather worked throughout his entire career in the men's department of Sears in Dover, Delaware. And so when it was time for my dad to go to his high school prom, my grandfather brought this tux home, gave it to my dad, and he wore it to his high school prom. About 40 years ago, my dad gave this tux to me. I've had it ever since. I don't wear it very often. I've mainly worn it for high school youth group skit kind of things. (laughs) My son, who played in an orchestra for a number of years, he wore this tux for all of those years that he was in the orchestra. And after he was finished being in the orchestra, the tux returned to my closet. Uh, This is the first time I've worn it in quite a while. Another piece of old clothing that I have is um, this jacket. I got this in seventh grade, so about 1976, 1977. At that point in my life, I was doing a lot of winter camping a lot of snow caving, and this baby saved my life. It was so warm, it was a great jacket, and it's still going strong. Go North Face, right? (laughs) Uh, And then, then there's this beauty here, (laughs) this down vest. I got this in ninth grade. This thing has been passed around our family. All kinds of different people wore this in our family. And somehow, just in the last two years, this ended up back in Deb's in my closet. It's returned to my life. So these are my oldest clothes that I have. (laughs) About five years ago, we were together as a family for Christmas in Spokane, Samuel and Hannah decided they were taking me shopping for a new wardrobe. I could not believe it, you probably can, but they thought my wardrobe needed some upgrading. They wanted to at least get my wardrobe into the 21st century. We had a great time shopping together that day. There was much laughter over Dad's wardrobe ineptness. They're still working hard to save me from clothing embarrassment, but I think I'm a bit of a lost cause. Of course, when Paul chose to use this image of one's wardrobe, he was not talking about the clothes in our closet. He was talking about an internal wardrobe. He was talking about what we choose to put on inside of us each morning as we head out into the world. The passage begins by reminding us that we have been set free to choose for. Paul wrote, So if you are serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from Christ's perspective. 
Paul starts this section by challenging us, the reader, seek the things that are above. Act like a follower of the Jesus way. Be alert. See things from Jesus' perspective. In other words, use our God-given freedom to be very intentional about how we live. We do that by every day choosing our wardrobe. At the heart of this section of Paul's writing are four lists. The first two lists describe the nature of our internal wardrobe when we are shuffling along, eyes to the ground, absorbed in our own world. The first list we may find offensive, or we may find it easy to say that that list doesn't imply at all to my inner wardrobe. Paul's list included sexual promiscuity, impurity, lust, doing whatever you feel like whenever you feel like it, and grabbing whatever attracts your fancy. Each item in that internal wardrobe list highlights choices that we make as humans which completely ignore the impact of those choices on others. We often like to believe that we have matured beyond this type of seemingly base behavior, but lust and greed are factors in all systemic injustice, which all of us participate in on varying levels. Lust and greed are a part of patriarchalism and systemic racism and economic injustice. How alert are we to how lust and greed hang out in our wardrobe? How do we expand our sight rather than shuffle along with our eyes on the ground, absorbed with our own lives? The second list includes wardrobe items like a bad temper, irritability, meanness, profanity, dirty talk, and lying. This second list from our old wardrobe, we probably more readily embrace as an actual part of our wardrobe, a part we have more awareness of and a part we probably regularly try to change and overcome. Because, right, each of us can have a bad temper, be irritable, express meanness, use profane language, lie. And that was just in the last 15 minutes. This second list reminds us that we truly must pursue our new wardrobe. We must intentionally work to let go of our old wardrobe, let go of the old ways of the world, let go of our self-focused lives. God has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit to instill us with the courage and the power and the strength to let go of our old wardrobe. Letting go of this old wardrobe is a daily choice. It's a choice of using our freedom for blessing others. It's a choice that takes alertness and intentionality. Letting go of our old wardrobe is not easy. I'm not giving up this tux. After this second list, Paul wrote, Now you're dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the Creator with God's label on it. All the old fashions are now obsolete. The wardrobe that God gives us to bless others is unique to us. Each of us is gifted by God in different ways to be a blessing. This is why community is so essential, because we need each other to bring healing and wholeness to the world. We need all of the gifts that are in this room. Paul's third list is a transitional list. 
The third list prepares us to understand the need to let go of our old wardrobe and embrace a new wardrobe. Paul wrote, All the old fashions are now obsolete. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish, religious and irreligious, insider and outsider, uncivilized and uncouth, slave and free, mean nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. One of the consequences of living, shuffling along with our eyes to the ground, is that we miss the expansive and inclusive nature of God. Consequently, as humans, we then create categories for people. Categories that define some people as less than other people. This putting people in categories and judging people is a prevalent aspect of our old wardrobe. Putting people in categories is a result of our lust and our greed and our self-centeredness. One of my moments where I learned to take off my old wardrobe happened when I was serving the church in Leadville. The Leadville church is in Denver Presbytery, and at that time, Denver Presbytery was just beginning to figure out a partnership with a presbytery in central Brazil. The moderator of Goya Presbytery came to Denver for a month. And he, Eudocio, spent five days with us up in Leadville. This would have been in the mid-90s. As we were together, I quickly realized that Eudocio was light years ahead of me in understanding technology and how it could be used in the church for ministry and mission. Spending time with Eudocio quickly opened my eyes to some of the racist, prejudiced categories that I had created for people who live in places like the edge of the Amazon basin. Eudocio blew apart so many of my hurtful, prejudiced categories. Being with Eudocio opened my eyes to the damaging wardrobe I was wearing. Paul aims here to help the folks making up the church take off their old, familiar wardrobe of various categories and dispose of them. Paul challenges the church to be a group of people who together are moving beyond our human categories to God's ideal of inclusivity. The Holy Spirit is primed and ready to fill us with the courage and the strength and the power to let go of this wardrobe of hurtful categories. The fourth and final list is the most well-known to us. Paul wrote, So chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. The wardrobe God has picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline, be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of whatever else you put on, Wear love. It's your basic, all-purpose garment. Never be without it. The new internal wardrobe that God has designed for us is a wardrobe that keeps our eyes up, seeing all of the opportunities to bring blessing to the people around us through compassion and kindness and humility and quiet strength, discipline, even temperament, forgiveness, and love. As you think about God's beautiful list of internal wardrobe qualities, which of those come more naturally for you and which require more intention on your part? What would it look like for each of us to nurture these 
external wardrobe qualities that bless others? What practices can we develop that will grow compassion and kindness and humility and quiet strength and discipline and even temperament, forgiveness and love? Paul ended this section on inclusivity and developing a new wardrobe, focusing on the communal nature of our lives. Even though we live in a culture that celebrates and worships the individual, the truth is our lives are connected. The choices I make impact you, and the choices you make impact me. Paul wrote, let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. We are in this life together. And together, we help one another develop God's beautiful inner wardrobe rather than our self-focused, old, worn-out wardrobe. And the fact is, we need one another's support and aid in building a wardrobe of compassion and kindness and humility and quiet strength, discipline, even temperament, forgiveness, love, and peace. Without community, we simply will keep our old, self-focused, damaging wardrobes. I'm going to keep my old clothes. They're just clothes. But I hope you'll join me and help me in becoming more intentional about wearing God's new internal wardrobe, a wardrobe of compassion and kindness, and humility, and quiet strength, and discipline, even temperament, forgiveness, love, peace, thankfulness, and inclusivity. Amen. Let's stand and join in singing uh, another song together. Oh,
Please be seated. And I invite you to join your hearts with mine and let us pray. Holy and loving God, we hear you. We need to figure out how to put on love before anything else before anything else we do or say in this life. But somehow we struggle and we fight against it. And our world struggles as well. God, as we look out to the world, we see hurt and we see brokenness and we long for it all to be healed. We long for you to bring healing to this world. But we also know that you call us to not just sit and wait for you, but be part of what you are up to. So God, help us to listen to and to heed your call to make this world a better place. God, we pray for peace in our world. We pray for peace in the situation between Russia and Ukraine. God, we pray that you would protect those at risk of danger. Turn hearts and minds away from war, Lord, and bring all to a place of peace. All around our world, Lord, we know there are people who live under the threat of harm from others, and it just isn't supposed to be that way. Lord, may we all lay down our weapons and put on love all around the world. We pray, Lord, for those in this world who are impacted in dramatic ways by natural disaster, whether that's from wind or fire or water or drought or snow. This world that you have created, Lord, it is a wild place, and we're just one little part that lives in it. So God, help us to love and to care for your creation. Help us to love and to care for one another in the wake of natural disasters. And God, be near to those who need your help. And may we work together to help bring aid. We pray, Lord, for all those who feel like life is a struggle right now. God, for those who struggle with loneliness and forget that they are loved and lovable, May they know deeply your loving presence with them. God, for those who are frustrated, frustrated with life, with school, with work, with a relationship, Lord God, soothe their troubled minds and help them to find a way forward. God, for those who are grieving, we pray for you to be so near to them that there is no fear only peace. For those who are struggling with their health, God, we pray for your healing to be upon them, strengthening them and bringing them to wholeness once again. We give you thanks, Lord, for all the ways that you show up for us, for all the ways that you are present. May we continue to grow into the people that you intend for us to be. May we we reflect who you are more and more as we grow every day more fully into life. And we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Redeemer, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Please stand and, and join us for our final song this morning. The darkness fades into new beginnings as we lift our eyes to a hope beyond. Our creation waits with an expectation to declare the reign of the Lord our God. We will not be moved when the earth gives way, for the risen one has overcome. Today, let us be more aware of the internal wardrobe that we take with us everywhere we go. And let us each day choose the beautiful wardrobe that God has created for each of us. To God be the glory, to the earth be peace, to Christians be courage, and to all people be hope. The peace of Christ be with you now and always. Blessings on your day. Thanks for choosing to be here, and look forward to seeing you soon. Mm -hmm.